reach their financial goals. Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finserv, or Bajaj Twins as we famously call them every time we comment on them, maybe discuss them, they have been massive wealth creators. So is the journey just about at the beginning for Bajaj Finance? Will this great company become uh, from great to a uh, unforgettable company? So to take the conversation forward, I have with me none other than Sanjeev Bajaj of Bajaj Finserv and Bajaj Finance. Thank you, uh, Nikoj, and thank you for those uh, kind words for Bajaj FinServe and Bajaj Finance. But really, today is the big day for PT Now. Congratulations on your uh, 13th uh, anniversary. And uh, as you said, whether it is uh, our companies, whether it is ET Now, we know that this period of time signifies that great businesses are built over the long term. They are built with quality. They are built with a focus on costs as well. But more importantly, they are built with a complete focus on what customers of today and tomorrow want and uh, what's the best possible manner for us to deliver it to them. The world is going through an extraordinary challenge. Challenge where interest rates will move higher. Inflation is structurally high. The consumer demand so far robust but could get punctured. How would you assess the big picture for us? Because when we spoke to you last time, things were different both globally and locally. And now things have changed rather rapidly in less than three months. Nikoj, let's look at this through three lenses. The first is the global lens. When you look at the global lens, what you're seeing is a period of significant uncertainty driven by the war, driven, driven by COVID-related uh, supply chain disruptions and COVID itself which now seems to be under some amount of control, but you never know, you could see a nasty surprise, but the supply chain disruptions continue to be true, especially given China's uh, zero COVID policy as well. And keep in mind that uh, many of these countries, Western countries put in a lot of liquidity into the last two years, which countries like India could not afford to do. So you saw ballooning asset prices. As a result of that, uh, those countries in their last 40 years has, have not seen the high level of inflation that they are seeing right now. Many hoped it was temporary, but they've realized it's not. And that's why you're seeing an accelerated rise in interest rates um, in many of these countries. We just heard uh, uh, the last uh, rate hike, 75 bits by uh, the Fed. And from what they've indicated, you'll probably see another 150 to 175 bits uh, in this year itself, which means the West is telling us very strong focus to bring inflation down and uh, we are going to do what it requires for that. Now, our situation in India, if I look through the Indian lens, um, so let me look at the Indian lens of challenges. Uh, again, we are in a period of high inflation. Uh, we have seen the RBI starting to act on this and I believe that you will continue to see uh, increases in interest rate as well. You've seen the government take uh, initiatives as well to cut import duties where required, to put in export controls where required so that uh, our uh, prices come down. We know to the common man, we know to the middle class customer, it's food prices, it's fuel prices, and to the middle class probably home ownership prices, uh, which need to be monitored. Let's hope that while the monsoon has started a little late, we still see a normal monsoon, which should bring down uh, food prices. And I think it can help in reducing inflation by 50 to 75 basis points by what economists say. So that would be an important uh, area for us to monitor because unfortunately fuel, there's not much we can do. The central government has already cut taxes. I hope state governments uh, would do that as well so that uh, it provides relief to the common man. Our challenges continue with respect to supply chain disruptions as well and the effects of war. So that's the second lens, our domestic challenges. The important is the third lens, which is the opportunity. See, keep in mind that in our case, we don't, we've not seen excessive leverage as a country the way the Western worlds have seen. So we don't have to go back to the kind of levels they need to. We have to keep uh, inflation in check. Uh, keep in mind that we have limited tools at our disposal because a lot of this inflation is supply side led. It's not demand side led. And that's where a thoughtful balance will be required by the RBI, where they will cut some more uh, or they will increase interest rates some more to uh, bring demand down. 
but there's no point taking interest rates up so high that you bring demand down but you don't impact inflation because it's supply side based so that's that would be one uh, thought in my mind beyond that if we were to look at a year year and a half down the line the world is looking for an alternative to china as a manufacturing base as a service base and this next decade can be india's decade um it's a decade where led by the pli schemes focusing on that employment led incentive schemes that uh, we believe that the government should pursue the revival of private sector capital investment and the deleveraging already in the banking system which exists a combination of these could actually give us a best decade yet ahead of us so i do see short term challenges but i do see medium term opportunities as well now when we spoke to bajaj finance last along with the quarterly numbers they were confident of a solid fy23 the guidance was 8 to 9 million customer addition for fy23 aum growth of 25 to 27% but that was couple of weeks ago couple of months ago a lot has changed after that are you confident that what you've shared with us at the beginning of the year in terms of in forward guidance and indication that is intact well at this point of time uh, we continue to see overall uh, reasonably robust uh, numbers on the growth side um what's also important is that uh, our net losses are at historic lows we are back to pre covid lo- levels and even below that which means the quality of business continues to be good as well now the forecast that we made was keeping in mind the indian economy growing around 7 and 1/2 8% or so we know that this tapers off in the q3 q4 uh, that's as per rbi's forecast as well so a lot will depend on where inflation uh, heads in the coming quarters and where interest rates uh, interest rate hikes uh, go based on that if you believe that we need to revise our forecast we will we'll come back the fact that interest rates are moving higher and you also increase interest rates uh, could there be a challenge in terms of managing nps or we are nowhere close to that challenge you know this will differ um, from uh, company to company depending on uh, uh, what quality customers you lend to what income segments they are in how leverage they are in. Uh, we don't see that as a challenge at this point of time given our significant focus of lending in the middle class uh, given our focus on data and our ability to monitor their leverage or our leverage position through credit bureaus and other means um so at uh, this point of time we don't see that as any significant challenge opportunity subset mr bajaj which you referred to is also centered around data which means digital and understanding of customer the fact that your phase 1 of web, web platform will go live later this year in october 2022 can i say that that would be the transformation period for bajaj finsaf absolutely the phase 1 live that goes uh, that should go in the third quarter and we then by the end by the first quarter of next year we have the phase 2 as well which were a set of additional features that we believe were as far, were required to keep us at the forefront of what we are offering uh, a combination of this really is what makes bajaj finance a real fintech a company that is steeped in the capabilities of a financial services company but that is also leveraging this digital world that is leveraging this uh, technology not just for a frictionless experience for our customers not just for instant loans for them but also in the way that our employees interact with customers with each other the way that our entire collection of for the debt management works with a high level of transparency and quality um, our uh, payment system and our payment gateways which will allow customers to use our services a lot more than they do for loans for example or the entire merchant ecosystem that uh, we have built over the last decade and a half um making it easier for them to work with us uh using specific digital properties or platforms that we have built for them so what you what we talk about and the phase 1 of our 31 platform is what we see is only for the consumer but there are parallel efforts that are already in place 
for the entire ecosystem. And we believe the way this works together in a synchronized manner is what gives us that competitive edge. You know, I've had the pleasure of tracking uh, Bajaj Finance very closely. And uh, I've tracked the numbers. And barring the COVID downturn, the growth for Bajaj Finance has been a robust 25% plus, barring some exceptional quarters of because of COVID. So my question is that what point in time do you think law of averages would kick in? Because the base with each passing quarter since you're growing between 20 to 25% is also growing higher, which means in less than three years, you're actually doubling your base. So to maintain this growth rate uh, might be a mighty challenge. I think that's a fair point. Uh, and it's uh, largely driven not on the uh, consumer product businesses, but uh, a large part of the business that comes from home loans, which is a high quality long-term portfolio. But uh, because that stays on for a long period of time, as you're correctly saying, that's where uh, the EUM sticks and uh, doubles every three years or so, three, three and a half years at the current pace. Uh, we've continued to project in the medium term, 20-25% uh, growth. Again, I'm not talking about this current year and its challenges. We will see if we need to review our forecast uh, in a couple of quarters. But when I talk of medium term growth, we are still less than 3% of the banking system. And the way the middle class is growing in India, and as I said, the opportunity that we see for the coming decade, the base is going to grow much larger. And that's why our growth, our growth in market share will be hopefully on that much larger base. So we are still very enthused with the opportunities that exist. We are conscious of the fact that, as I said, the home loan portfolio um, does uh, uh, slow us down, but it slows us down for all the right reasons and uh, with the right quality. We are also conscious that uh, competitive activity has increased. And that's where, as a team, we stay focused with what we need to do to stay ahead of the game. The entire digital transformation within a business which was probably one of the digital leaders anyway in the country. But this additional transformation effort of the last two, two and a half years is only so that we can stay ahead and closer to our competitor, uh, to our customers, so that hopefully we continue to drive strong growth in the coming years. As the digital transformation would kick in, can I assume that the ROA trajectory for Bajaj Finance will only improve I, I would not want to uh, talk about ROA or uh, profit, uh, Nikonj, uh, because there are so many different factors. As you know, the ROA is a blended number across multiple lines of businesses. We have uh, businesses like a consumer durable uh, products in electronics, short term, but very high return businesses. We have, uh, I would say, medium return, uh, but longer term businesses, which are our SME uh, products, loan products. And then we have something like home loans, much longer term, lower ROA, but probably the lowest risk business. Now, depending on how uh, growth occurs across these businesses um, and the external factors based on which we moderate growth or accelerate in particular segments, the ROA could move around. But if you looked at uh, over the last five or seven years, we have always talked of about a three and a half to four percent ROA. We are currently ahead of that, and I think steady state in the medium term that is something for us to aspire towards. Since the mortgage uh, business is the bulk of your business, about one third of the mortgage business, can I say that that's one space where the challenges are also going to increase? Public sector banks are becoming much more aggressive. HDFC Limited and HDFC Bank's proposed merger, which means that one big bank is also become will also become very competitive in that space. Uh, I know that's the anchor part of your book, but is that anchor part of the book now slowing down? We actually believe, uh, Nikunj, that uh, in the medium term, there is tremendous opportunity in the mortgage space. Um, as uh, HDFC merges, with the bank, uh, they actually would not be able to uh, occupy parts of the mortgage business, which as an NBFC they can do today or as an HFC they can do today because banks are not allowed uh, to lend uh, to parts of uh, the real estate uh, sector. And a good blended return on the mortgage business requires you to participate across that value chain. 
In addition, we believe that being mortgages and HDFC Bank uh, is a great quality bank and I wish them the very best. But the next four or five years, they will have a set of priorities and challenges uh, post approvals in this integration. We think that creates a window for uh, many others, including us, to continue to build our housing finance business. In addition, when you look at lending available to HFCs, a large part of that used to be taken away by the premier HFC. With uh, that going away now, that access becomes available to uh, that much more to many others. And with Bajaj Housing Finance being one of the premier players in the market, uh, it again brings that access even closer to us. Uh, of course, this business has to be built thoughtfully. Uh, it is something that uh, we've been doing over the last 10 years, originally in Bajaj Finance and now the last three or four years in Bajaj Housing Finance. And we are very bullish medium uh, term on this business. We've had a chat on the disruption which is coming from fintech and your thoughts were that Bajaj Finance is an NBFC which is trying to become a fintech and there are a lot of fintechs which are trying to become NBFCs. Looks like it's the NBFC which is winning the race given that how some of the fintech and startups are feeling the heat of meltdown. You know, uh, it's actually, uh, it's a mixed result. Um, I think there is a significant amount of innovation, disruption, customer centricity, benefit of digital platforms that many of these fintechs have brought to the market where uh, otherwise incumbents would have just stayed on doing business uh, their own old way. Some of us have got more digital than others. So we must give credit to um, many of these fintechs and insurtechs for uh, doing that. But we have to also keep in mind that, um, you know, like the gold rush, you can get early to the game where you get value for building a platform, for getting some quick digital access to customers. But unless you can build a profitable business model, you are not going to be able to build a long-term business. And um, the advantage that many of these fintech startups have is access to venture capital, private equity. And that's a great advantage that they have. Uh, it's that capital which allows them to grow, to grab market share. But one has to keep in mind that that capital has to be returned. And in most cases, uh, you either go for additional uh, raises in the private market or you have to go to the IPO market. But the minute you go to the IPO market, your retail investor, your normal institutional investor expects a profitable return to his or her investment. And that's where... Uh, Many of the current fintechs are facing a challenge. They either don't have an economic business model or they have not reached a maturity where they can showcase that economic business model. But I believe that there's a significant amount of innovative work that they're doing. And this can help them in other ways, which is in B2B partnerships. For them to tie up with the good quality NDFCs and banks could allow them to coexist. And of course, some of them will get the NBFC equation right as well. So All right, that's the view coming in from Sanjeev Bajaj. The next decade will be India's decade and they're projecting a 20 to 25% growth in the medium term.